What's up guys, today we're looking at strategy and how to beat bigger and stronger opponents. Size and strength matter in Jiu Jitsu, but not as much as you might think. You can negate those physical advantages with the right game plan. The exact game plan that I've used to defeat opponents with considerable size advantages over me. From the junior belts to the senior belts, I've always done well against these physically imposing and skilled monsters. Even in MMA, I mean that guy was huge. I'm going to show you the exact strategies and concepts that I use to minimize other people's size and strength advantages. Let's get started with defense before moving on to offense. Never can you let someone grab your head or take an underhook, but the head is far more important. Under no circumstance can you let someone grab it. If your opponent takes an underhook, you're fine as long as you're on your side with an overhook, not on your back. It's okay if you're on your back as long as you prevent your head from being grabbed and your opponent from getting the underhook. See here how I prevent my opponent from grabbing my head and then eventually sweep him. Now look what I do as I come up on top. I grab his head and he Use that control grip to pass. Even a smaller opponent will smash you if they grab your head. A bigger person with gravity on their side will make things even worse. See here, I'm at risk of getting smashed after a failed sweep attempt. When my opponent grabs my head, my only focus is to get his grip off of me and keep it off of me. I'm patient and control the far arm as that's the arm which would do the grabbing. I know that if he grabs it, I'm screwed, so why would I prioritize or attempt anything else? You need to be disciplined in the concept of never letting someone grab your head. That discipline is what allows me to improve my position and now I'm in a much better spot with both elbows close to my body and my opponent's weight off of me. Now that I have good grips, I can move more freely and work my offense. To learn more about T-Rex arms, make sure to watch my 20 tips video. Here's another example. Alex is a physical monster and a guy that'll suck the life out of you if he gets dominant grips like head control. He knows he needs my head to control me and that's why you see this battle right now. He's battling for head control and I'm battling against it. My patience wins the battle and now I can improve my position yet again. Controlling the forearm is not only smart for defense, but it's also smart for offense, as there's a ton of attacks available with the far side grip like the Kimura Trap back take I do here. That would never have been available if I allowed my head to be grabbed. If someone does grab your head, you need to give them a reason to let go. One of my favorite ways is to off balance them to the side, forcing them to post out and let go of their control. You need to be proactive when you do this and not let your opponent settle their weight. You messed up and mistakes happen, but now's not the time to feel bad for yourself. You need to get moving and get that grip off of you. Watch as I off-balance my opponent using my legs, causing him to let go. I just saved myself from 300 pounds of smash while obtaining an underhook for myself, which I used to get on top. To keep their weight off of you, you want to prioritize guards and attacks which keep your feet in front of them. This will manage the distance for you. Not all guards and attacks are created equal when dealing with someone who is bigger and stronger. Like here, my opponent is trying to drive into me but can't because my feet are in the way. And when he realizes this, he retreats which opens up the sweep for me. A good example of an attack that you may look to avoid because your feet aren't between you and your opponent is the armbar. Because you lack the ability to manage the distance at this point and keep their weight off of you. Unless you extend their arm right away, it'll be tough dealing with them potentially stacking you and also be difficult to break their defensive grips. Triangles too can be risky, you run the risk of them stacking you and clearing the leg. If you've watched my how to not get your guard pass video, you'll likely recognize these guard retention techniques. After almost getting my guard pass, look how I adjust this time. I use my feet to keep his weight off until I can engage my hips to do the same. I'm not saying don't go for attacks like arm bars and triangles, I'm saying you may need to adjust and they're less risky attacks which we'll cover later in the video. Keeping your knees in front of your opponent will also prevent them from putting their weight on you. This is called a knee shield and it's called that for a reason. It protects you. You really need to use it if you're a small grappler, although everyone can benefit. Before we move on, let me know if you have any funny or interesting experiences rolling with someone much bigger and stronger, whether it went well for you or if it was a disaster. Now let's look at the fun stuff, offense. Plan A is taking the back, plan B is fighting from top position, and plan C is submitting from your guard. The best way to beat someone bigger and stronger stronger is by taking their back where they can't use their physical advantages nearly as much. If you were in a boxing match against a heavyweight boxer, wouldn't it be easier if you could fight them with their back turned and facing away from you? It's no different in grappling. We want to take the back and look for the submission. We'll look at how to get there and the best ways to sweep to get on top. We won't look at submissions as they don't really change from these positions and I have other videos on how to submit from the back and top position. It's hard to move bigger and stronger people. You're better off moving yourself, but it's hard to move if we're being controlled by their grips. The only thing stopping you from taking someone's back is their arm. 
knowing that if we force them to put their hand on the mat instead of us, we'll have a clear path to the back using our underhook. Here, I pull the collar forward to force my opponent's hands to the mat and then move myself onto the back using my underhook. It doesn't have to be this fancy, but look at the path I cleared for myself by putting his hand to the mat. It also puts his weight on his hand, making his legs light so I can move them to the other side. Here's two more examples, both have in common their hands on the mat and me with the underhook. In many cases, you'll still want to control the far arm as your opponent can't grab your head or darts you if you do. Because my opponent's arm is in the way with the overhook, I can't take the back so I sweep instead. The dart stroke is a great counter to the underhook and look at the consequence I face for not controlling my opponent's far arm. He wouldn't be able to lock up the grips needed for the darts if I had control of his grips. You need to watch my grip fight video if you haven't yet. It's a game changer for many and I'll link it at the end of the video. Let's see how this plays out while we're here. This is a really cool darts escape and a great example of combining wrestling with jujitsu as the sit out is a common and fundamental wrestling technique. Here I use it to escape the darts. Remember the only thing between you and someone's back is their arm. The arm drags are another great example of this concept. By dragging their arm to the mat or across our body it's no longer in the way and controlling us. We're free to move ourselves onto the back and attack from there. Here I think about the arm bar instead but my opponent counters by grabbing their own gi. So I just continue onto the back. There's a lot of ways to arm drag and you don't need to overcomplicate it. Literally just drag their arm to the side. Just a quick tip, often beginners are too underneath their opponent when taking the back and a little shrimp out will do the trick to get into a better position. Underhooks are not just great for taking the back but also butterfly sweeps. A butterfly sweep is great against bigger opponents because legs are strong and can move a lot of weight compared to the rest of your body. You don't need an underhook to do a butterfly sweep but that's the traditional grip and can be used to transition to the back like previously shown. They can be performed using a variety of grips and work against bigger and stronger opponents. I have a video breaking down butterfly guard that you should check out. Watch as I pull my opponent forward with my underhook, but before I can take their back, they put their arm in the way. I transition to my butterfly hooks and sweep him by loading his hips onto mine. Loading the hips makes it so much easier to sweep people that are much larger than us and is the next section that we're looking at. When your opponent's center of gravity is directly on your hips or past your hips, they become extremely light. We need to prioritize sweeps that meet this criteria. The John Wayne sweep is a great example and one you see all the time on the channel. I explain it in detail in my BJJ Fanatics instructional, check out the link in the description for that. Having their hips directly above yours is what makes X guard so powerful. Although X guard is a little tough to enter on heavy people, but if you can get there, sweeping is just too easy. How can I lift a 300 pound dude in the air? Well at first I can't, but once I get my hips underneath his, it becomes pretty easy. This was just a short summary of this concept. You can see it in more depth by clicking the video linked at the end. I want to say a big thank you to all my patrons who support me and the channel on Patreon. It really means the world to me to have your support. I do a weekly Q&A for them among other perks. Check that out if you'd like to support the channel too. Thank you for sticking around until the end of the video. If you're still here, please leave a fist bump or comment and make sure to follow me on Instagram.